Hey there, Goa fans. Mark DJ Solitaire here with episode 30 of Retro Goa Explorations, my series in which I present in each episode a track from the 90s Goa trance psychedelic dance movement. I'm choosing tracks that I remember from the time at specific events or sometimes tracks that I only came into contact with later, but were which were produced at the time. And uh, right now we're in the second year of uh, sort of my uh, involvement and engagement in the scene. Um, we are in the 95-96 season, and uh, this is a track that came out, I know, in sort of the first part of 96, I believe it was, but which I remember very distinctly. Um, being played by Cooney at an indoor Equinox party. I remember this took place at uh, Club Cheetah in uh, Kawasaki. Remember the event really well. I remember a couple of tracks from that party uh, that he played. He played at the end. I mean, I can't remember how long he played, but I remember really specifically these two tracks being played, one of which I'll feature today. And it comes from Etnica's first album on Blue Room. And I am dressed for the occasion here with that, with the both the Blue Room and the Alien vibe, uh, which really suits this incredible track. And I think, honestly, I think this is one of the underappreciated tracks on here. I mean, let's face it, you know, all of their music and all their albums is terrific. Um, I didn't feature yet Tribute, which actually might have been the first track of theirs that I got my hands on even before Astral Way, which I featured in the first season but um this is the first track on this album which is slower than i'm pretty sure anything else on here um and it's slower than average although it's actually just about the same speed as the track in the previous episode it sounds a bit slower and i love this track it's screaming butterfly by Etnik. That's the opening track on the album, and Cooney played this towards the end of the party, and for me, this just absolutely made sense. I think sometimes, you know, some slower tracks towards the end of a set, um, and or in the middle of a set, and again, it's always context, uh, I think it can work incredibly well, and I think right now there's too much of a sort of one- to say one note, even though we're not talking about notes, but just as the as that expression, a one note kind of vibe, you know, where everything sort of sounds the same. There's this one speed kind of vibe. And you'll notice if you know my sets, I vary the speed all the time. Uh, this is something that I heard Ollie do. I remember at that Fuji party, uh, he played, you know, out of about 10 hours, he played about 30 minutes or so where he really brought the tempo down. And funnily enough, I mentioned that to him uh, years later. He's like, I did that, really? Well, yeah, you did. Really? Oh, yeah. No, definitely. Um, you know, stuff at like the 120 to 130 range. This one's at just under 133 uh, BPM. I say just under because it's not exactly at 133. You know, this stuff was not always engineered with the laser precision as uh, as we have now. And that's some of what makes it so great. So um, so the track Screaming Butterflies, apparently, um, apparently that's the name that Carlo gave to his studio. Uh, the guys had no other real recollection about why they chose the title, except that maybe it sounded like a screaming butterfly, but I don't know what a screaming butterfly sounds like, but okay. Uh, I mean, pretty creative. Um, Maori told me that a lot of the sounds come from the Emu Morpheus, uh, which is in Astral Way and some other tracks at the time. Uh, the title itself probably came from Carlo as well, of course, given studio name. And that it's got the same uh, Kurtz file uh, 303 as vis Intense Visitation of Energy. Great track, which wasn't released at the time because there's a Jim Morrison sample in it. So they were being a little cautious. Um, and just some really, you know, there's some real alien vibes, you know, again, as per the t-shirt there. Um, and as there often is in Etnica, right? There's this real, the harmonic flavor that they use and the melodies and everything, very evocative. And also true to the name Etnica in terms of this ethnic kind of vibe. But it's like this alien ethnic vibe. 
right? Which again ties back into, you know, my first impressions, uh, you know, walking into that club in October 94 when Ollie was playing and was like, whoa, I'm in an alien nightclub, you know? And what would the alien culture be like? So it's, um, yeah, this is a really cool track. So, so as I was saying, I remember Cooney playing this towards the end. And I remember, you know, some of the Equinox people were all there together, you know, sort of end of the party. They weren't working, uh, you know, anymore. So they were able to really enjoy being able to dance. And I just remember this slow tribal feel to this track and thinking, like, you know, it just really stuck in my head. And this is a track that can actually really stick in your head in a good way. Just really magical, harmonic, melodic content. So what do you say we give this one a listen? Screaming Butterfly by Etnica. Okay, so just that climbing kind of sound that's going on here right as it starts off. Just that those alien kind of leapy things going on at the top. And then something I mentioned, you know, has some German trance, has a lot of voice-like stuff, and just this kind of this voice is just unbelievable. Mary said he couldn't remember where they got this one from. Great baseline and Super, duper, tribal, especially when the main riff comes in in a little bit. Beautiful bounce. Drum build up. I just love the simplicity of some of these riffs, right? And you get one note, the right rhythm, really sends a message just like Morse code really like sending a message just a little couple of little couple of little sneaky little sounds in there and then I mean that riff Super tribal, right? It's just got this groove with that variation there. Those, harm, those intervals that are happening, super evocative. We get a little break here with some really cool driving sounds. Such extraterrestrial music. I mean, really, like, you know, the way we have anthems and melodies and so on, and each culture has their melodies and so on. I mean, you just try to imagine, like, this kind of alien riff. I mean, it's just incredible. The way the rhythm changes as well with this riff. Point that out when it comes back. Right there. So you have the same pattern coming in, just the, the timing of it just really drives as it sort of shifts in its relationship with the beat. Beautiful little break here. And we got this little bit coming in here. Up and down. This is a total Etnica riff. Coming on the next one. You never know when it's going to go up or when it's going to go down. It's really great. It really keeps you. Uh, keeps me on my toes. that 
really simple pattern. Slight variation, eh? Variation was interesting. Huh? Now it loops. Catch your breath. It's just you know structurally absolutely brilliant. I mean these breaks. It's just like it's a time and you catch your breath. It's not a break in the content. The whole story is continuing. It's really brilliantly structured. Love the way that riff goes up. And then invent the call and answer. Repetition as well, there's this kind of almost near insistence. Very almost in real Italian body language as well, as well as the scruff. Okay, and that repetition. And then it goes up and down. You know, and there's, there's this relativity, right, of yin and yang with things going up, things going down, that when you're dancing and you're in that sort of really centered state that, you know, whatever it is that's changing uh, really catches your attention. So that up-down figuration, especially when it's that relationship, really, really plays with you. It's not the drive in the background. Combination of sounds, absolutely brilliant. Sure. Now, honestly, you know, one of the things that really gets me is how some of the slower music, same as, you know, to the fourth dimension in the previous episode, this stuff, when it's well-structured, when it's got all those hooks, you know, melodically, harmonically, rhythmically, all of that sort of stuff, you drop this at the right time in a set, 
if everything's been going really fast and you drop a slow track like this, it can explode because the, the track's not doing the work for you in the sense of, um, you know, when the track's going really fast, then you just kind of match that. But here, you know, the tension's building up, but it's slower and it just builds up even more somehow. So, I mean, this for me is absolutely explosive. And this kind of track, I think, can be in a way more explosive than ones that are much faster. I mean, of course, let's face it, you know, Green Nuns, Ring of Fire, which we did a couple of episodes ago. I mean, of course, you know, that stuff is explosive. But this has its own way that it uh, taps into your energy reserves and uh, just gets you going. So absolute masterpiece. I think one of the underappreciated ones uh, of Etnica simply because, I think, because of the speed. And a lot of folks are not comfortable uh, playing these uh, at different speeds. Maori told me he's always got it, you know, handy in case the occasion presents itself. So I'm glad to hear that. Um, again, those very clear memories of Cooney playing that. I was at the back of the space and just sort of really seeing the whole scene and just, you know, really seeing the really tribal, uplifting, otherworldly kind of atmosphere that uh, this amazing track created. It's really one of my so probably more recent favorites. I've just come to appreciate it more and more. Uh, in recent years as I've been listening more closely. So um, I will sign off here and uh, present the whole track so that you can enjoy it in its full splendor without me talking over it. I'm Mark DJ Solitaire, and I'm leaving you here with Etnica's masterpiece, Screaming Butterfly. <laughs>